on Mogley. When I pop out like a lightning, pop, briefcase, no wallet. Just blew a bang like Scott. Kill that in the AM going real fast. UK, honey, at the drill that pines me. Before we carry on too far with this video, I want to announce that this is going to be a full giveaway. Especially I want this to go to someone that is getting into or starting the into the world of FPV. It's the perfect beginner kit. It's something that's going to follow you through your FPV journey. So if you're subscribed to this channel and you leave a comment below describing the story of how you are going to get started in FPV, you are automatically entered to win this full kit. So get in the comments and get it done. Let's see what's in the Emacs FPV combo box. Uh... Got our drone, which reminds me very much of the Emax Tiny Hawk 3, but it's actually the FPV combo, so that's cool. I really like the Tiny Hawk platform, so I'm excited to see what that's like. Then we've got a battery charger, and you can charge it with just a USB port, which is super convenient. We've got Emax's latest controller, which is a FR Sky based. Got some pretty decent gimbals with nice long sticks, and you can actually extend them which is really, really nice because I have really big fingers, for example, and I want to be able to have a little bit more throw. Then you got four switches, power, trims, just in the back, it runs on one 18650, USB micro, and up here is the uh, attachment for the screen and the goggles. And it's gonna be bound to the drone already, so I presume if we turn it on and turn the drone on, this is literally the first unboxing, I haven't even tested this. Plug it in, the drone's connected, this side, so. Literally already in the air. Didn't even have to mess with it. That's pretty cool. Sometimes when you're getting started with FPV, just like having to like fiddle around with all that stuff at the beginning is frustrating. And that's all it took, I'm already in. Next up we got the goggles that come with it. And then we got two antennas. And then this screen is actually magnetized to the front so you can go. Lovely. Stick around there. Now you have goggles with an adjustable IPD here, where if you kind of squeeze it a little bit, you can get it to come out and it will click into place so you can get the screen and the die after farther away from the screen. You'll notice that this screen also has a quarter 20 thread, so if for example you have a little tripod like I do here, power it on with the power button on the side, you could even fly with it off of the tripod just like this. Let's see if they even come on the same channel. Oh look at that. Done. So now we're ready to go fly this drone, FPV, all right. Look at that, already in the air and it's, we're like 20 seconds in. <laughs> Boom, unboxed, flown, made it, let's move on. Okay, I'm really rushing because my wife needs to get out the door, my goggles are dying, but I've got everything ready. We're gonna go for the first flight right now. It's just hilariously, rushed so i apologize if this isn't the most exciting thing in the world here we go i left everything on the default settings so that i knew exactly where it was going to go uh, the first thing i've noticed when i'm taking off is that this is a 16 by 9 camera so everything's a little bit warped and i've got four by three goggles uh but yeah so it's a not the right camera for the job for me but the uh, goggles that the drone comes with is gonna work so let's go inside the house here Yeah. Oop, losing it a little bit back there. Oh, still got control though. Through the kitchen, back in, out through the garage. Hit a gap on the way and we're good. So it flies really nicely. Obviously with this being a 16 by nine camera on a four by three, I'm a little struggling. I should have used the goggles that it came with. Flying really nice, there's a little bit of a breeze, but not much. Camera tilt's a little bit, probably a little bit high for like a beginner. And I'm sure that's easily changeable. I'm not struggling with anything at all. Like, oh, uh, that was me. I disarmed it because my finger doesn't fit on the internal mode. Yes, we can. So I use turtle mode to be able to flip the drone be able to flip the drone back up over onto itself so that I could fly through. But yeah, it's a little bit of a mess in there right now, sorry. Bork, bork. Ooh! Uh, yeah, I get a little bit of break over in the corner, but I also have directional antennas on these goggles. 
and they're pointed the opposite direction of which I'm filming. So, obviously it's going to cause some problems. But yeah, anyway, my wife needs to leave, so I'm going to put this down and we'll set up a, maybe a track inside a little bit later. Maybe use the right goggles for the job. And uh, yeah, but first impressions, it's flying awesome. It looks, it seems like it's going to be a fun little machine, especially for beginners. Alright, let's go. While we're waiting for some of the batteries to charge, I wanted to jump into some of the technical specs of this. This 1S drone drives these 0802.5 motors at 15,000 kV. So you're able to make that 1S push this drone to the limit. So it actually flies really well from the Maiden. We saw that it had a good chunk of power. It could really hold up. There was even a little bit of wind that it was fighting through. So that's awesome for a 1S powertrain that runs at 15,000 kV. It's crazy. Beyond that built in is FR Sky D8 protocol. So you can bind this up to other FR Sky remotes, not just the one that they've got. So either you're gonna take that remote and you're gonna run with it and that's gonna be the lifetime for somebody with a beginner drone, right? They're just gonna get that controller and stick with that controller. Or if you wanna upgrade your controller soon, you'll still be able to fly your Emacs ready to fly kit because you could rebind this to that controller if you wanted to. And the final incredible spec that this has is it has a 25, 100, 200 adjustable VTX. So if you're flying 25, for example, you're gonna be at a race competing with other people, you don't wanna have a high power output going on. But if you are just hanging out at home or flying around the yard or somewhere local, you would wanna be able to bump it up to 200 milliwatts, which I've done for flying around here at the house. Having a micro drone that has a 200 milliwatt capable VTX combined with the pretty good range that you get out of FR Sky is gonna give you a lot of range, a lot of freedom to explore with your starter your beginner drone. And one last cool feature that I wanna demonstrate is that Yes, well, you can use the screen as part of the goggles. Some people don't want to start out flying with goggles. They would rather have it, for example, mounted to the remote. So what you can actually do is stick this piece here into the back of the controller, like so. There's actually even a bolt back here that you can uh, screw in and make sure that this is locked in place, though. It's pretty tough as it is. Then into the bottom of your screen, you can screw this kind of GoPro mount looking thing into the bottom of it. You can then mount this screen to the controller and now your whole FPV setup is built into one controller like this. Since this is a beginner drone, I wanted to test it on a beginner and my wife volunteered to uh, try it out. She's done a little bit of flying uh, in the past. Like you have these little like toy, like Star Wars drones that you yeah. practice on. So she's gonna be the perfect person to test it on. You ready to fly? Yes. I don't really like the top one very much. I mean, it's still gonna flop. It's still gonna fall off. Yeah. So that's one of the things that I was kind of, as I've been playing with the goggles specifically, it feels like it pulls the back part of the goggles off of my head. Um, so I've been wearing a hood or a hat <laughs> to do it, and it helps a lot, but it's, uh, that's one the downside of these goggles so far. So it's something about the grip on the back of hair, even my short hair or her long hair. How's the distance to the eyes? Like, do you feel it's, like your eyes are straining or anything, or is that well, all right? the screen is off, so. Oh, well here, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so funny. Can you see my eyes? <laughs> They're huge. Okay, because it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. That's so funny. Because the goggles are adjustable, so you, you just turn your head to the side for a second. So you can use these different notches to push it in and out the diopter of the screen to see where it is. So, you see you? And then for everybody at home, I'm rolling DVR here on my goggles because the Emacs goggles that come with the basic kit don't have DVR. So that's what you're seeing here. Oh, it's going. There you go. Ooh, here I come. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I started too hard with my pitch to the left and I just rammed it right into the wall. Ooh, 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 I'm going. Yeah! We. Oh, they're right. It's super windy outside today, otherwise we'd be outside, where I think it'd be a lot easier to learn. Just make nice, smooth inputs. There you go, now you got some yaw, yeah, that's good. A little forward roll. So just try to keep that altitude the same. 
I'll just like hold you right here. Off the chair. As a beginner slash someone who hasn't flown in a number of years, I believe, I definitely needed to have been in the sim for at least a bit to get those um, muscle memory finger controls back. It did fly very smoothly. I think it did is a little bit more yaw heavy than the previous drones that I've flown, where I remember mostly being able to just focus on altitude with the left hand and definitely need to be thinking more about yaw and throttle at the same time with that left hand, which is basically where I was running into problems. I haven't seen what I've crashed into so far, uh, but I don't think I've broken anything, which is great. This drone is nice light however it with the field of view I mean I'm not used to flying drones but the it feels like the, my field of view is so small that like I'm turning and I'm still hitting things all over the place I think that's just the nature of drones so my, my first experience with drone was line of sight so I'd have a very good idea of where my drone was in space this is a really the, about as much FPV as I've done I've only spent a few minutes flying whoops you know in the last five years and so this is really some of my first experience with um, FPV versus doing line of sight flying, which is more of what my background is in. But you're doing really well. I mean, like you're making short, like quick corrections rather than like letting it, like you know, really cranking on the throttle, having it smash into the ceiling. It's it's smooth. So like I feel like just with a couple more batteries, you'd actually be pretty confidently moving around the space. Like honestly, really do. So yeah, do you want to keep flying or are you satisfied with your FPV experience for the day? <laughs> Would you like to go back to Wordle? <laughs> So Rachel's gonna spend some time getting some batteries off camera, but we'll revisit with her when she's had some more practice on the sim and on the drone. Did you have fun? I did. It's very forgiving. I mean, even just within two, three batteries, I felt like I was able to improve a lot. So now that we've seen what it's like for a beginner, let me see what we can do if I like practice a course and try to fly it as fast as I can to see what it looks like once you get some practice under your belt. Now that Rachel has had a chance to fly it as a novice, I want to test it from the pro perspective or the expert perspective. And I'm going to build a course, as technical of a course as I can figure out, here in the garage. And we're going to see just how fast we can get it going through there. Two notes about this is that one, this is a 24 FPS project, so it's a little bit stuttery because the DVR records at 60 FPS. And then the other part is that remember this is a 16 by nine camera, but recorded on four by three goggles and DVR. So it's a little bit warped, but you get a sense of how well you can fly this when you have a little bit of practice. And it's not even that good because I'm not that great of a, a micro pilot. So enjoy. So now that I've had a chance to fly this in a bunch of different environments and to experience what this ready to fly kit is like, the thing that I want to conclude with it on is that it's a drone that's going to join you for your full journey in FPV. I think it has a lot to offer for someone who's a beginner. It doesn't break, it doesn't crash, it's not going to hurt something. You're going to be able to experience and learn how to fly FPV like my wife demonstrated. However, once you get to an upper level when you're a much more confident pilot, it still isn't going to be holding you back, right? I can still rip through this course. I can still take it into acro mode and go fly it outside. I can have fun with this drone, even though it's not, you know, the most highest performing thing. And, you know, it comes with all the kit tools that you need. It has a set of batteries. It's got a pair of goggles and a controller that you can use with other drones. So, you know, what I want to say about this in conclusion is that this is the perfect drone to have a part of your journey for the long haul. It's an investment not just into learning FPV or having fun with FPV, it carries across all of those things. So I'm excited to give this away to help someone start their FPV journey and hopefully this will be a part of their kit for a long time. So thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, liking, commenting on the video, all of those good things. Congratulations to whoever wins it. I can't wait to read about your story of FPV. 
And in the meantime, stay flying.